So we just interviewed Matt Wolf, the AI YouTuber. Here's a quick clip from that interview talking about the future of autonomous vehicles. Let me know if you agree with our takes or not, and watch the full interview on the Wes and Dylan podcast channel. Links down below. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've definitely, like, I've ridden the Waymos when I've been up in San Francisco, and they're, you know, they, they work great. You can see the little screen. You can see everything, the bicyclists, the cars, the people walking on the streets. They seem, to me, it, I felt really, I felt safer in a Waymo than I feel in an Uber. Right. Really? Like, we've all had Uber drivers, right? That are probably yeah. like crazy going fast, weaving around cars and stuff like that. Right. Um, in the Waymo, you don't get any of that. Right. It, it seems to kind of follow the rules. And, you know, maybe yeah. sometimes you're like, you could go one mile per hour over the speed limit. It's not no, you don't have to worry about it. But the yeah, Waymos yeah. won't. Right. 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 <laughs> That's a good point. You know, the, and plus the incentives for, yeah, for Uber is kind of to like pay the drivers less and less. And then they're like, they need more and more hours on the road to make money. And then they're worse drivers because they're just pushing so hard. Yeah. I think yeah, from, it, from like Uber's perspective right now, the drivers are the middlemen and they want to figure out how to cut out the middlemen right um I, like uber's big vision and i think it has been since very very early on was yeah. to have human drivers in the beginning and then eventually phase out the human drivers and have an autonomous fleet um mm -hmm. i still think that's their mission i think like right now the 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 actual human drivers in the ubers is their biggest thorn in their side and if they can eliminate those and just have everything be autonomous you know it's probably gonna fare a lot better for for Uber because they don't have to deal with all the issues that, that come with all the human drivers. But yeah, they're and throwing you, so much you, money at it for so long that that's the only reason it, it kind of makes sense, you know what I mean? That this was the ultimate goal, not keep dr human driver around forever, so. Yeah. And do you both feel the same way about uh, airplanes? Like if you had to put, like, would you much rather have a autonomous system in the next four or five years built by Boeing? Or maybe not Boeing. <laughs> Boeing, Boeing's got quite the reputation. Say let's say, let's say Demis Hassabis comes in there yeah, okay. and like says flying is a good way to, to save the world and has some Google infrastructure behind it. Do you want to see the Waymo of airplanes sooner rather than later? Or do you feel like it's a different story? I think I'd like to see that. I mean, I honestly think if, if we can figure out how to make that kind of stuff autonomous, it will probably actually be safer, right? Because you take the... You take the element of human error out of it. I, you know, the the big crash that happened in India. The I, I don't know if they fully know, but from what I understand, they're leaning towards like pilot error. Right? He flipped off a switch that he wasn't supposed to flip off that cut off the field of the engines. Right? If all of this was autonomous, I feel like those kinds of human errors are a lot less likely to happen. So you know, maybe still have a human in the cockpit for a while. <laughs> um, but I, I sort of look forward to more and more of that autonomy in airplanes. I mean, we we already got it in airplanes, right? They've already got like the sort of flyby wire and certain airports that plane could just sort of land itself without the the pilots needing to interact. Like that already exists. Um, but I I would love to see that technology get better and better. I think it would um, make flying a lot safer. I also think you know when it comes to flying, I th I think you want some sort of like hive mind fleet sort of thinking right in the same way like the the teslas sort of know where the other teslas are yeah. and that's part of how like the the autonomous driving works i think we need that kind of thing in planes because i think air traffic control is one of the big bottlenecks one of the big issues in air travel right now is there's not enough well-trained, you know, air traffic controllers. It's a high stress job. If uh, air traffic controllers like tired and didn't sleep that night and, you know, didn't get their coffee in the morning, accidents can happen. So I, I think you need more of that autonomous sort of communication between planes. So they all kind of know where they are. And I think, I think you get to a point where AI is sort of doing that, 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 that role of the, um, you know, of the, 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 what do you call it? Or organizing, organizing or the, orchestrator, the swarm or whatever. Exactly. The swarm. Exactly. Swarm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I the think swarm I want a world where that happens. I think I'd feel safer flying with that, honestly. 100%. I think there's certain jobs that are just so horrible for humans for how we're wired. And that's one of them, like the air traffic controller, because it's, number one, very dangerous, because if you screw up, lots of people can die. It's very tedious. It's not very exciting. It's very uh, detail-oriented. You know what I mean? There's so many things that so few people can like effectively do it. You know, you're a little bit tired, you get a little bit bored, something horrible can happen. That should be automated, assuming, you know, it's safer than a human. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I still, I still imagine like humans sitting there, like watching it, making sure that like everything's moving smoothly. But I do feel like a lot of that air traffic control stuff can be uh, automated. And I, I feel like AI could probably like really, really help in that area. Honestly, I just think, you know, 
which airline, which airport <laughs> wants to be the first one to try it. That's the real scary thing is no one wants to be the first guinea pig to yeah. test that kind of thing, I think. I'm curious what you guys think about this. So somebody proposed one of the jobs that AI is going to create is, I mean, this was kind of tongue in cheek, not 100% serious, but it, it kind of is. Uh, they call it the sin eater. So basically every time AI screws up, there needs to be a person that sort of signs off on it, takes responsibility, right? So if an AI architect mm -hmm. that creates um, amazing architecture, but one of one in a million of the homes fall down, there needs to be a human that kind of takes that responsibility. Same thing with traffic control. Do you think that's going to be a, a, a job in the future, some sort of a certifier or, you know, they call it sin eater, some, you know, a scapegoat or whatever. Yeah. Or, are we, the job is a scapegoat for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting or, question. Yeah. Or are we just going to do some sort of insurance thing to like, okay, if AI screws up, somebody gets paid, like, how are we going to approach that? Yeah, you're right. There's a job there that I've never thought about till right now that is um, like a systems analyst of how AI is deployed and like risk tolerance of some kind. Yeah, there's there's definitely something there because companies are going to be deploying it and someone needs to just watch it and make sure it's not causing harm and has to be responsible for the harm that it does. And people yeah, are yeah. going to want to take that person and put them in court or it's testify or whatever. Yeah, getting into the sort of like ethics and philosophical side of all of that, right? Like we're they're already wrestling with that with the self-driving car stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like if a self-driving car hits a person, whose fault is it? Is it let, let's is it let's say it was a Tesla? Is it Tesla's fault who built the computer in it? Is it the person who owned the car that was sitting behind the wheel but right. not actually steering it? You know, like who who was at at fault in those situations? And I still feel like. um they haven't figured out an answer to that. And I don't know the answer to that. Right. It, it's yeah. very sort of like that, that kind of falls in those like ethical, philosophical, like realm well, and of probably I don't understand legal how too. you deal with that. <laughs> like, so yeah. Cause I did have a, I was in self-driving mode when I had a fender bender in my Tesla and yeah, they were just like, it's your car. Like it's your, and so I think it's always going to be the company saying the individual is responsible and always the individual's class action lawsuits and things saying like, no, you're responsible. And then there'll be some kind of legal decision and all these things. Yeah. But I do feel like over time that has to sort of like shift a little bit. Right. Cause at some point, a lot of these, a lot of these companies want to even like take the steering wheel and gas pedal out of the vehicles. Right. Like they, they want oh, to get to true, a point yeah. where you're just sitting in the, in the seat and it's taking you where you, you need it to go. I mean, if you've been, well, yeah. I, I'm sure Dylan, you've been to CES, right? Like you've seen some of those prototypes already where there's not even a steering wheel in it. In that case, how could the driver possibly be responsible? Point. That's what I would have said to the insurance. I would have been like, I have no steering wheel. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how was I supposed to deal with this? You know, instead of being like, you should have grabbed the steering wheel. I'd be like, okay. Yeah. yeah. So like once you get into those scenarios, now it's like, okay, I feel like more of the responsibility is on the hardware creator and less on the person just sitting yeah. in the vehicle. And like, what if it's not even your vehicle? What if it's a fleet vehicle, like a robo taxi where, you know, you don't own the vehicle. You're just, you know, you just hailed a ride share and it took you where you needed to go and it got into a fender bender. That would most likely be on like either the creator of the car or the ride share company, not you, the person who just right pulled up your app and summoned the car to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you're running like deep seek locally and it accidentally does like a root delete of your content, it's just your fault. But I guess if you are reaching out to a cloud system and storing it there, then maybe they could be more responsible because you'd yeah. be like, I'm on your infrastructure. One thing that makes this so hard is it's part of it is kind of like that trolley problem. Because like, let's say we have 2 million fatalities, 2 million pedestrians a year dying because a car hits them. If we were to implement all full self driving, let's say that goes down to half of that, 1 million, let's say. People still will emotionally respond to a person getting hit by a car, by a self-driving car than they would. Because it's like, yeah, people run each other over all the time. It's like, you know what I mean? It's it's not exotic or whatever. It's, we're just used to it. But it's like we would, in real terms, save a million people's lives from right. these horrific deaths if we put full self-driving out there. You know, assuming that's the right, that's we get it to that point. But I think people will still have pushback just because it's more, I don't know, novel, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I, I think people want to, you know, have somewhere to point the blame at, right? They want yeah. to be able to be like, well, that driver screwed up and you know hit, hit the pedestrian crossing the street or whatever. Like they they need something to like point their point finger to. at. And I feel like this sort of takes away that person to point the finger at a little yeah. bit. Um, and those lives yeah. that are saved, they're kind of not visible, right? You yeah, know, yeah. You know, I mean, like, like, it almost feels like God, whoever invented the seatbelt, we owe that guy like a billion dollars. How you many? Know what exactly. I mean? yeah. Like. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're already seeing that I exact scenario with like Tesla's, right? Like every time, like literally every accident that uh, Tesla has, you probably hear about it, right? Wow. You don't hear about every accident that just a regular car has, but you hear about every accident that a Tesla has, especially if there was a fire or a fatality or something like that, you're going to hear about it. But the, the percentage of those issues you know, relative to how many Teslas are on the road is way less than actual humans behind the wheel, right? Yep, yep. So it's it's definitely, it, it's it's interesting. And I, I don't know the answers to that. I feel like there's, you know- It's like how there's three, sh stuff. there's like three shark attacks every year, but like billions of people go to the beach and you're yeah. like, okay, don't worry. Like it's really not that high when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. There are like three shark attacks a year. And then like a, a country wants to try to eliminate sharks right. and kill them all when they see them in the area. And it's like- <laughs> <laughs> but it's just then that's more like a viral media problem too because it's like yeah some of those things just get amplified so much and they just become everybody hears the story of the shark or the, the car accident and it's just like right in our face feels yeah. so real but it's disproportionate to the population and we're so confused and i'm sure that problem is going to get worse too with ai so so let me know what you thought about that check out the full interview down below and i'll see you in the next one